Guys, um, Aaron Novishin will be talking to us or, or hosting a panel now. Uh, Aaron runs the Culinary Edge, which is a pretty cool consulting firm based in the US. And the panel is uh, MasterChef, which I first heard about from Duncan a couple of years ago. This is really exciting. This, this is something which Dubai desperately needs to add entertainment to the, um, to the scene, if you like, in Dubai. So over to you, Aaron. Take a seat. You take this one, Frank. Thank you. There you go. Well, thank you all. Uh, I am so honored. Thank because you. I have such an awesome panel to lead today. Thank you. We have been talking about entertainment now for the last hour plus, and this next discussion is going to be about MasterChef. Now, MasterChef is truly the most popular cooking show in the world. To be literally the best and biggest, most inspirational, most innovative show that's ever been on television, right? Spurn, I think it's in 60 countries or somewhat. So I'm going to introduce our two panelists today. We've got Francis Adams, Group Director of Brand Strategy for the Endemol Shine Group. Please warm welcome for Thank Francis. You. And her partner in crime, from what I'm learning, <laughs> is Duncan Fraser-Smith, who's the Vice President of TFG, Food and Beverage Consultancy. Please welcome Duncan. Thank you. To get us kicked off, let's please immerse ourselves first in MasterChef. Thinking the same thing. This is the chance to change your life. Do I have what it takes to become a MasterChef? Well, now we're going to give you the chance to find out. Being a great home cook is one thing, but being a master chef, that's something entirely different. Let the battle begin. So Herzlich willkommen bei MasterChef Deutschland. Welcome to Sveriges Mesterkoch. No se voy a engañar. Y más duro y exigente. Vincitore si porterà a casa il titolo. Alzate. You've got 45 minutes. Ready? Ladies and gentlemen, your time starts now. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, to kick this off, obviously, biggest television show in history in the food space, mm -hmm. now coming to us as a restaurant. Tell us a little bit about the inspiration for the project. How did this thing all get going? How did you two meet? Let's talk about this amazing relationship <laughs> you guys are a kick to hang out with. Yeah. Please. I, I, I will miss the, the bit about Duncan stalking me, but that's for a different conversation <laughs> altogether. But... Um, I mean, MasterChef, I mean, first of all, for me, I, I come from the TV world, and it's been a real privilege to be here for the last two days. And actually, it's amazing. You know, we're dealing with the same problems that you're dealing with. We're dealing with technology, entertainment. How do you keep entertainment? The, 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 the choice of platforms, all of those things are so relevant to, to our, our industry as they are in your industry. So it's been fascinating for me being here. But, I mean, MasterChef, as you say, we make it in 60 countries uh, around the world, so that's each individual show. We actually uh, broadcast it in uh, 200 territories around the world, and for those of you who are good at geography in the room, there are only 202 territories in the world, and I'll uh, be awarding a MasterChef apron to anyone who can say the two territories that we're not in. <laughs> But it means you've got this very global brand, you've got huge awareness, but the other real problem you have is that each one of us and each one of our viewers has a very different experience. And how do you take you know, that beautiful food that you see on the screen and that can take hours and days to make and take that into the restaurant space? And it's something we've been really sort of challenge with for the last couple of years. It's something I really wanted to do, but never quite found the right partner to do it with. Um, and I think for me, the big point was I didn't want to recreate the memories that they already have. I wanted to create new memories. 
And every time I talked to people, they just sort of said, oh, well, we're going to recreate this. And I was like, and that. And then I got this phone call from this slightly crazy Australian um, who said, you know, I love MasterChef. And as you know, if you're the brand owner, what you want when you move into that space is someone who really loves the brand as much as you do and really knows it. And then I'll let yeah. you, Duncan, go on about then how we came to sort of work together. So the, the truth of the matter is that it was actually about two and a half years ago at 2 a.m. in the morning that I wrote, woke up and wrote on a post-it note next to my bed, MasterChef restaurant question mark, because I thought, Someone must have done it already. I'd been, I was on season eight of MasterChef in Australia, I think, at the time. And then, yes, I did stalk Francis for a while, I will admit to that. Um, but ultimately, it was because I could see quite clearly how you could bring the emotional connectivity, and I think all of us in the room understand that in the restaurant game, the greatest gift that we can do is create an emotional connection with our, with our guests and our consumers. And I could see that what people were doing with watching MasterChef on TV, they would cry with, con with, with contestants, they would laugh with contestants, they would get angry at dirty tricks contestants play. And I wanted to bring all of that emotion and that, and that creativity into kind of a, a restaurant element. So it, it really was at the beginning, I will say honestly, you know, and much thanks to, to Francis and the team, Endemol are very protective of their brand, and they should be. I mean, it is a global brand over, what is it now, 300 million viewers? Yeah. Yeah, a, a, that watch this show. And for them to trust us to go and say, well, we're going to go and create this restaurant out uh, in Dubai, which is uh, as a directive of the uh, Dubai Tourism Authority, is going to become a gastronomic centre um, in the world. Uh, we worked very closely together in the beginning days to kind of come up with a structure mm -hmm. about how we were going to make this restaurant work, because we didn't want it to be gimmicky. We didn't want it to be um, theatrical or over-themed. It was really about harnessing what is you know, the essence of MasterChef, what is the essence of the people that compete there, and then translating a dish that can sometimes take two hours to produce on the show into a dish that we can restoratize and execute in 35 to 45 minutes. Wow, speaking about this food experience, I'd, I'd love to share a little bit more connecting to the restaurant now. I've got a, sure. another short clip here that you've shared. Um, why don't we run that to talk a little bit about the food creation and the restaurant creation. My name is Margarita, I'm from Venezuela, and I'm the head chef for MasterChef, the TV experience. I'm so excited to share with you that we will be opening the world's first MasterChef, the TV experience restaurant here at Millennium Place in Dubai Marina. MasterChef as a brand has touched so many people and their lives all over the world. And yes, you will be able to experience for the very first time the mystery box delivered straight to your table. We're really excited about this restaurant. I look forward to welcoming you then. Great on Thank you very much. <laughs> well, let's talk about the format of the restaurant a little bit. You know, it's like, how do you translate this incredible show, the competitive nature, the emotional connections that you've talked about? How do you bring that to life? What's some of the programming around the menu and the food and how that's going to come to life? Yeah, well, I think the, the very first thing that we wanted to do was we wanted to actually reach out and get in contact with former MasterChef champions. And um, so what we did was we, decided, we created a roadshow where we basically went uh, firstly to the UK, which Francis was present at, and I think we had 10 MasterChef former champions sitting in the one room, which I think for them was the first time that they'd all sat around yeah. a table together. And we were throwing just re uh, recipe ideas out into the middle of the room. I was up there on a whiteboard, you know, writing them out by hand. But what was fascinating was every single menu item or recipe that came out, there was an underlying story behind it. So it may have been, you know, as an example, one of the particular MasterChef champions said, well, this is the dish that won me the Marco Pierre White Challenge in the year that I competed. Another one was, this was the dish that won me MasterChef 2017. This is the dish that I created. And another one, it was as simple as, well, my grandmother used to cook me a dish sim similar to this, and this is what inspired me to create this dish on the show, which the judges loved. So we pulled all of these together. We started in the UK. We then got contact, um, uh, feedback from the US as well, and then we went to Australia and did exactly the same thing in a round table environment. And as a result of that, we ended up with, I think it was about 130 different yeah. recipes 
um, which is, I can tell you now, they're not all on the menu. It's a little too big for most restaurants to sustain. But we have, we've been able to whittle that down. We actually locked the menu just a, a, about a week ago, and so we've got about 25 of those uh, on the menu. But what's really great about that is each one of those dishes, each one of the MasterChef champions and finalists that, that's, that worked with us has at least one dish on the menu represented in our, in our launch menu, so, which is very exciting. And I think what was really important for us from the brand side was that it wasn't a restaurant coming to us with, this is what we want to be and then trying to retrofit it into MasterChef. Mm. You know, we've, we have this talent, and we have this talent that's coming through every year from every single country around the world. And actually, you know, they all start as amateurs. And we have this amazing transference rate of 72% of the people who um, get through to the semifinals of the show leave their career as doctors or lawyers, and they set up their, their career in food. And so it was really important for them and for us that they had a seat at the table and that they actually felt that this was being crafted around them as much as around what works as a really great dining experience. So it's that sort of marriage between the two. And what's been exciting about that as well, for those of you that get to come and experience the restaurant when we open uh, in April, is that we, will be, we have set up a residency program with these champions. So over the course of the next two years, these people that have contributed and put their heart and soul into these, these recipes and these menu items are going to come out uh, and spend five days uh, in the restaurant with their own set menu that, that heroes their cuisine. So it might have been, I think, the, the winner from last year in, in Australia was a, a gentleman by the name of Sachi. He's Indian, so he will come and he will have a, a menu with set Indian cuisine that is on there. If it was Asian-inspired or, or French-inspired or Southern American-inspired, so the opportunity for us to have that different point of contact is going to give you know, the different cuisines available even with the core menu still at play. One of the biggest exciting things about MasterChef is the mystery box. Yeah. How are the consumers and your guests going to interact and be able to participate in mystery box coming to life in their dining experience? Well, um, obviously to start with, finding a, a head chef for a restaurant with the MasterChef logo over the top of it that was prepared to cook other people's food at a high level was, was very difficult. We auditioned a lot of, of, of people um, to take on Chef Margarita's role. And when she came on board, we actually challenged her with giving her a box of ingredients, and we gave her 45 minutes to come up with three dishes. Um, so she went away with the three dishes, and I'll, I'll be honest, we, we had flank steak in there, we had um, salmon, uh, chicken livers, we had red wine, there was a range of things. Um, but we, we, we asked her to come up with, no, sorry, two dishes. Anyway, at the end of the 45 minutes, she came back and um, she presented that she'd cured the salmon, the flank steak was impeccable, and she said, if I'd had, you know, a port wine rather than red wine, I was going to do a dessert with the chicken livers. And whether she could pull that off or not, that was enough for me to go, you're hired, because anyone who's prepared to put that out there and say they can do dessert with chicken livers is pretty impressive. So what we have in the restaurant as a third element, so you've got the core menu, you've got the, the talent coming in and doing a residency, is you can actually order the mystery box at dinner. And the chef will come out of the kitchen and bring the box to your table, and there will be 15 ingredients in the box. You will choose five ingredients from those 15. Chef will then go back into the kitchen, hand write a recipe out, cook the dish, bring it to the table for you, and then give you the recipe so you can take it home and cook it yourself, which I think is quite unique. It's exceptional. Yeah. So Dubai, right? Amazing capital. We, many people who are here have got to um, network and be together at Griff in its previous um, uh, versions of itself the last few years. It's our first year in Europe. It's kind of nice to have a little change of pace. Mm -hmm. uh, Dubai has as many restaurants opening as are closing every day. I heard say, someone told me it was net neutral as of yesterday. <laughs> and, right. and when you think about six of the biggest projects in the world happening there, if there are that many restaurants closing as quickly, wow, how to compete how to think about standing out in this, in this very competitive market, probably the most that I've ever seen in the world. How are you going to market the business? How do you think about your, bringing your media intelligence to creating a buzz for this restaurant to ensure that it's successful? I think that's where, right from the start, it was really important that the show was embedded into it. So, I mean, what we have within even the menu itself, because we have 30 dishes from 30 different champions around the world, 
we have our own ambassadors, and that allows us, you know, as you can imagine, if you become a winner of MasterChef in uh, Australia, you have the most amazing following. And we use their social media, we use the MasterChef social media really to help drive it. Um, and actually, one of the things I was talking to the team back in London about was, you know, at what point are we actually going to start running um, you know, uh, we'll do episodes actually in the restaurant where we can come and actually take over the restaurant and do a restaurant challenge where you're not only cooking for diners, but you're cooking for MasterChef diners. Um, so really sort of, it's so clearly linked back to the show that it, for us it doesn't feel like it's so much marketing. It, may, it feels more, much more sort of holistic than that and that we are actually able to just sort of use what we already have, but use it to best effect. Yeah, I mean, on top of that, we, the, the people that contributed to this, the, the, the talent, the champions that contributed to this, they're like an alumni for the restaurant now. And they, even if they're vacationing in Dubai, they call us and say, can we do something? Can it be filmed? Can we do something to promote the restaurant? We got a great email the other day from um, one of the former winners, season seven of MasterChef US, Sean O'Neill, who said, oh, I'm actually shooting MasterChef season 10 at the moment in Los Angeles. And he said, they asked, a couple of the, uh, the new contestants asked us, what are we doing now on camera? And he said, well, you'll be pleased to know I'm, I'm actually involved in this great restaurant, MasterChef, the TV experience that we're creating in Dubai. There's people from all over the world involved. And he said, and that's going to be screened in June this year at the beginning of MasterChef season 10. So, the marketing machine is out there yeah. because we're giving them a, an opportunity to, to showcase their food in what will obviously be a gastronomic hub going forward, which is Dubai. So this is a really visionary project, right? It's a global impact. Um, a lot of people here are trying to figure out how to create great projects, how to fund them, how to build teams around them. Can you talk a little bit about the, the partnerships that you have and the relationships that you have that have helped bring this project together? And you know, how, did you help, how did you navigate that? How did you get the backing? Um, and, and who's really helped to bring it to life? Well, I've got to say, Endem Endemol Shine as a partner has been phenomenal. We have, we've always viewed this as a, as a, as a proper partnership yeah. from the perspective of every single detail of, of the design of the restaurant we've shared. Um, every piece of, of marketing collateral and, and design philosophy style guide that they can share with us, they have. Um, it really, it's just been open board, it's been very open borders because for both of us, we obviously don't see this as the one and only. This will be the flagship property, but you know, the fact that it, it hasn't been done before and, and it is such, a, such an amazingly, you know, emotionally um, generating concept, we see this going out into the market and growing it within the market. But it, the, the boundaries have really been laid, uh, lowered and we've been able to talk very f mm. freely, um, push a few boundaries in some areas, push a couple of boundaries in other areas. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been very much a collaborative effort. And I think it's, it's really helped, I mean, because of the sort of global footprint of MasterChef, of when Duncan's going off and doing big presentations to be able to sort of, you know, give him a bespoke showreel for the person he's going to go and see, it makes a big difference. And I think one of the things that, you know, I, would, I heard yesterday is, you know, the importance of, you know, it is a partnership. You are, you know, figuratively in bed with your partner and you have to go through, um, through the yep. highs and lows together. And I think if you don't have that sort of willingness to work together, but also that real willingness to push each other out of their comfort zone slightly. Um, and I'm and sure there's, we've, there's been we've a few times where we've done that. Um, and that it, that's what makes it exciting. On top of that as well, I just want to tie into that. Um, I mean, Ma Endemol and MasterChef have, have a, uh, a deal with MSC Cruises that um, is MasterChef the experience on the sea. Yeah. And so that has nothing directly to do with the restaurant. However, we're already talking to them about tying in when MSC pulls into Dubai, having the winners of that competition come and have a dining experience in the restaurant. So there are all of these cross-promotional platforms that we can leverage on both sides, which works very well. So in every project, there are learnings, yeah. right? Um, and I always say I've, I've definitely learned more from my failures than my successes. <laughs> so maybe you could share with some of the people here, you know, what, what are some of the learnings that I'm you've had along you this journey? <laughs> and, you know, and, and how's, it, how's it helped improve, you know, your um, perspective on the project? I think... My first point in learning has been never set a, uh, an opening date. <laughs> um, especially not in the bar. It's a moving target not, at it's, best. It's a moving target. And, um, 
you know, when you're trying to, you know, sort of integrate a hundred different partners from my side, it's, it's learn, you know, it's, it's drip feeding information. Um, I think one of the things I did too soon was I probably got a bit too excited about it. And then, you know, you talk to all the different broadcasters and production partners and, and um, commercial partners, and they're like, okay, when can we get involved? And you're suddenly like, actually, it's not going to be this year, it's not going to be next year, it's going to be the year after. Um, and so, um, but I think what I learned very quickly was it was more important giving it that time and getting it right. And although people thought we were slightly mad and kept sort of pushing it out, I was like, no, I want to get it right rather than rush it. Um, that's yeah. been my biggest learning, I Abs think. Absolutely. And, and from my perspective, it's been about 100% transparency to the point where we even set up time-lapse cameras in the restaurant so the guys at Endemol in the UK and Amsterdam could log on to a website and actually see construction was actually <laughs> happening. Yeah. It wasn't sitting there in a vacant site and it wasn't going to happen. So, um, yeah, but, but also, you know, it's, it's the first time that, 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 I, that I and our organisation have worked with uh, under a licensed agreement, and so that's been a huge, great learnings f for us um, from that perspective. But yeah, I think, w and also to get the first one right, you've got to get the first one right. There's no second one if the first one isn't right. Yeah. And when you think about getting the first one right, like, how do you think about success metrics? How do you think about, in order for us to grow this in the first year or two, this is what this needs to look like? Well, for me, it was really important that success metrics weren't based on financial. For me, it's about protecting the brand, and very much it's about giving Duncan that flexibility to get it right, to get customers satisfied and getting that loyalty in. And then it's a looking at, you know, where do we take it next? Where do we roll it out to? There is no sort of, I mean, yes, we could all say we want to be in five markets in five years, do we want to be in 50 markets in five years? Correct. Who knows? Um, and I think that's been really important rather than just, I think sometimes you can bring in a commercial partner who's like, especially with these big brands of like, okay, I want you know, t you know, 20 uh, restaurants within the next year. And I don't know if that's realistic. Um, from my side, it definitely mm. isn't. I mean, uh, I'm, not, I'm certainly not going to disagree with Francis on the brand side. I think that's, that's hugely important and obviously consumer and customer, um, the experience. From a financial perspective, I think what's interesting is where we're positioning the restaurant in the marketplace is it's mid-casual, to pre mid to premium casual. So it is not a fine dining experience, even though the food you are getting when you see it, and one of the dishes on the video, by the way, there is, is one of the dishes that's going mm. on the menu. Um, it is approachable. It is so people can come in and actually have the experience without feeling like they've been taken to the cleaners in, in their hip pocket, and that was also one of, the, one of the reasons behind doing this was it's the, you know, the ethos behind MasterChef is taking the ordinary and making it extraordinary, but we still want you to pay realistic prices for that experience. So, yeah, and it's a TV audience. And it's a TV audience, correct. You know, it's what people watch um, on, on your sofa at home. And actually, it's interesting, one of the things, we just did a bit of research in the UK, and one of the most, my favorite st statistic that came out of it was, if you watch, uh, follow people's mobile um, accounts and internet activity while they're watching MasterChef, the first thing they do is um, pick up Uber. And usually their favorite thing to order is a pizza. <laughs> so, you know, you've got this absolute fine dining on screen and people are sitting at home and ordering, you know, a Domino's pizza. And that's your audience yeah. and that's what you've got to, you've got to get that balance right between the two. Opening date. <laughs> <laughs> Magic question. Yes. Um, well, we know what it is. We know what we it know is. We know what it is. Yeah. Uh, it will be open before the end of April, that is for sure. Yeah. Oh, so very, very we're soon. Very, very soon. soon. Oh. Very, very soon. close. Yeah. We're, we're, all, we're, we're all invited to the opening party. Of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's only 120 in seats, so it's actually quite an intimate experience. I, th I know a lot of people were expecting it to be sort of two or 300 seats, but it's, not, it's 120 seats, obviously, because we want to deliver. Uh, that experience. For those of you coming to Dubai, back to Dubai, those are from Dubai, we're actually doing a pop-up at Taste of Dubai week af weekend after this, and we actually have uh, one of the judges from Australia, Matt Preston, coming over to do some mystery box judging um, challenges as well. So there will be some of the food available to have a sneaky taste of before we obviously open the restaurant. So I welcome you to come and see us there too. Great. Rapid-fire questions. We just have two minutes left. Best dish on the menu. 
Oh, oh, that can only go to me, I guess, because yeah, Francis only I saw it yesterday. Yeah. Um, best dish it. on the menu is a pea and truffle soup with parmesan and brujola wafer. Mm. All right, here's one for you, Francis. Yeah. Favorite off-camera moment oh from God. the show. Oh, um, there's a lot. <laughs> um, my favorite one, I have to say, was I pitched up to film MasterChef Morocco, and they were doing a meat challenge, and we're used to, you know, having a, a, a you know, in the West instances, we're used to having a live pig being brought onto set. This one we turned up, and we had two lions being brought onto set, <laughs> um, and we had to get them off camera absolutely straight away. Yeah, that was quite hairy in many ways. All right. And for the future of the brand, second restaurant, Las Vegas or London? Ooh, Ooh. good. But you know what's been interesting? And, and uh, we've had a lot of interest from Asia. But without, I won't mention where, but we've yeah. had a lot of interest from Asia. So it, uh, it's a brand that resonates uh, in that market. And uh, so, yes, but, you know, stay tuned. We'll let you know. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I just wanted to say thank you both very thank much Pleasure. for an exceptional conversation. Please, a round of applause for Duncan and Francis. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Cheers.